Hey guys, Joe here at JP Details and today I'm going to show you how to professionally detail an engine bay. I'll include the do's and don'ts whilst I explain the full process. Today's demo car is a 2012 BMW 320D, a 2 litre turbocharged diesel engine producing 200 brake horsepower. The engine bay isn't the worst I've ever seen, but it isn't the best, it could definitely do with a good detail. The very first step is to inspect the engine bay and decide on a plan. Whilst you're inspecting the bay, I would advise you to check all caps and ensure they are fastened tightly and also keep an eye out for any stray wires or loose fitting hoses. Whilst you're still in the debating stages about what products and brushes you're going to use, I'd advise removing all loose debris from the scuttle panel. Most commonly found are dried up leaves and twigs. Very simple reason. If you don't, these will fly in the air and land on the car and engine bay when these areas are pressure washed. By removing the leaves and twigs, this will stop you inevitably having to work back on yourself as we progress through the detail. Modern automotive engines are more than capable of being blasted with a pressure washer. I wouldn't advise you to do this on a regular basis. In fact, once the engine bay is fully detailed and protected, all it will take for future maintenance is a quick detailer spray and a microfiber cloth. As a one-off to get this engine bay up to a professional standard, the only way is by using a pressure washer. An important step before getting the engine bay wet is to waterproof all wired connections using a plastic bag and detailer's tape to avoid any potential damage to the electrics. Use your eyes, find all the plugs and cover them up. You just need to remember not to get too close to these particular areas when pressure washing. One last bit of advice before jumping in with the pressure washer, don't get too close to any areas of the engine bay. Drop the pressure settings on your machine if possible and use common sense when operating. Use the pressure washer at a distance because we'll be letting our chosen products and brushes do the hard work. We're going to start with cleaning the underside of the bonnet first. Obviously dirt, grime and product is going to fall onto the engine bay so to save working back on yourself I'd advise you to do the same. One important thing to remember is to minimize the amount of water directly hitting the insulation material that's commonly found in the middle on the underside of the bonnet. If this material becomes drenched in water and left undried for a lengthy period of time, there's a good chance it will sag and stretch, resulting in it needing to be replaced. I only give the material a light and quick rinse once I've finished the rest of the painted areas to remove the oversprayed all-purpose cleaner and I wouldn't advise spraying APC directly on it. We will give it a clean, but not just yet. My chosen product to clean the engine bay is Meguiar's all-purpose cleaner diluted 4 to 1. Liberally apply product onto your first section and detail away using your chosen brush. I'm using a 4 inch soft wheel brush. Once the first area is complete, I'll move to the next and repeat the process. Generally speaking, I'll clean one quarter of the bonnet at a time and once all quarters have been cleaned, I'll then use the pressure washer to remove all product and grime. Moving to the engine bay itself and starting with giving the full bay a rinse with the pressure washer, remember not to get too close and don't force the pressure washer up close to any particular areas, just a light to medium rinse to remove the loose dirt. Liberally apply chosen product to half the engine bay, just to reiterate, I'm using Meguiar's all-purpose cleaner diluted 4 to 1. Apply some product into the brush and begin working into all accessible areas being as thorough as possible. Reapply product when required and it may also be handy to have either a hose or bucket of soapy water at the standby to rinse your brush out with.
The second tool I'll use is an inner wheelbarrow brush for reaching into the areas where my hand won't fit. You can use any type of brush for this, just make sure it has reasonably soft bristles and again using your chosen product work into all accessible areas. All areas cleaned, take the pressure washer and again at a reasonable distance remove all products and grime. Time to inspect the engine bay and our results. On the top of this filler cap there seemed to be an excessive build up of grease and dirt that the all purpose cleaner and soft wheel brush didn't remove. For areas like this I'll up the product strength and use Meguiar's degreaser diluted 6 to 1. My first attempt was using the 4 inch wheel brush which didn't work so I chose to use a much thicker bristle brush and Meguiar's degreaser to offer heavier cleaning power which did the trick. With the engine bay now clean and moving back to the underside of the bonnet, using Meguiar's quick detailer and a couple of microfiber cloths, I'll dry all areas here first before drying the engine bay. You can use a spray wax of any type to give the painted areas a bit of shine and protection for easy maintenance cleaning. At this stage, I'll also give the insulation material a quick clean whilst also drying it at the same time using a couple of microfiber cloths and Meguiar's quick detailer. You'll find with the insulation material being black, it shouldn't show up dirt that much. If it required a deeper clean, you can always remove this material and give a deeper clean using the products, brushes and pressure washer. I found most commonly these only require a light clean and wipe down and dry for them to look respectively clean. My chosen method to dry the engine bay is using a Metrovac Master Blaster. Alternatively, you can use microfiber cloths, it will just take a little longer. I find the Metrovacs do an incredibly thorough job allowing you to remove standing and trapped water from the tightest gaps and crevices. Whichever your chosen drying method, ensure all accessible areas of the bay are respectively dry. Once the drying stage is done, I'll remove all waterproof bags from the wide connections whilst giving the engine bait an inspection, making sure everywhere is clean. Moving on to dressing and protecting the engine bay surfaces using your product of choice, I'd advise following manufacturer application instructions. For me, I'm using Auto Finesse Dressel. I'll apply the first coat of Dressel to the entire engine bay, allow the product to sit for two to three minutes, then apply a second coat. This will ensure all layers are hit and the dwelling times allow the product to absorb and bond to the surfaces. Using a microfiber cloth, I'll work the product into all accessible areas whilst removing the excess. Possibly the most fun part about the engine bay detail, because at this stage we're seeing everything jump back into life.
Annoyingly, after two coats of auto finesse dressel, the plastics had darkened, but they still looked a little faded. I followed with using Maguire's Hyper Dressing diluted 4 to 1 to redress all plastics and follow the same process, working the product into all areas whilst removing the excess. The results from Hyper Dressing gave the plastics a far darker appearance, which completely satisfied me as a finishing product for this engine bay. Most vehicles have a painted front cross member, which due to being painted, doesn't dress well using a plastic and vinyl dressing. Using Meguiar's quick detailer and a fresh microfiber cloth, I'll give all painted areas a good clean, which should reveal a streak-free, shiny and protected finish. Not just the front cross member, but also the painted channels that run up the sides and also any other painted areas in the engine bay. The final step in my engine bay detailing process, using Meguiar's quick detailer and a microfiber cloth, I'll look over all areas and ensure a squeaky clean finish. Chances are you will find a few drips and runs from the insulation material. Also, there's a lot of hidden gaps and crevices inside the engine bay and underside of the bonnet. So it is inevitable there will be a few bits of water and product here and there. Using the microfiber and quick detailer, I'll remove all the fending drips and ensure a professional finish is achieved before standing back and admiring my results. Engine bay complete and what a difference it's made. Just to recap on the do's and don'ts to ensure a safe engine bay cleaning process, check all filler caps to ensure they are tightly fastened. Keep an eye out for any stray wires or loose fitting hoses. Waterproof and mask off all wired connections or any potential hazard areas such as intake pipes and batteries. Use the pressure washer at a distance and don't force water up close and personal to any parts of the engine bay. Don't over soak the insulation material and dry it out the best you can. Use common sense when cleaning and take your time. If you're doing this as a job or even part time at the weekends, make sure your business insurance covers you for engine bay cleaning. The condition of this engine bay only required a medium strength chemical detail. For older vehicles and particularly high milers, you may have to up the chemical strength. And for me, if this was the case, I would jump straight to Meguiar's degreaser diluted somewhere around four and six to one. You can use a steam cleaner. However, I find a pressure washer is far more efficient. So this turned out to be a one manufactured detail using all Meguiar's detailer range products. All honesty, out of these four products for this particular job, I cannot fault them in any way. The engine bay looks incredibly clean and it's going to be a nice and easy process maintaining this engine bay going forward. Thank you for watching, please drop the video a like, put your comments underneath and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. I'll hopefully catch you in the next one.